Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James. And in this video, let's go over the latest episode of From, episode four. I mean, we know what happened at the end of last episode. We know what's happening with Tabitha and most of us probably saw the trailer. So we knew the ambulance thing. And man, what an episode. It's, uh, I think it was a whirlwind of an episode. It definitely built up to when the ambulance arrived and when they saw the dead body in the road, it was just, man, it was on from there. It was an emotional episode. It had all the elements that you needed in an episode, I think, and more as far as the characters were actually talking to each other in a lot of the scenes, finally, finally. And, you know, the character building and story progression and uh, revelations, some revelations, and uh, just furthering the story, you know, it's opening up a little bit, per se. You know, with the Jasper thing and Chris, more about Christopher. So, yeah, it's opening up. So it's exciting. Can't wait to hear you guys' theories. I love to hear your theories. I mean, they may not match with mine. Mine may not match with yours. And we may, you know, try to convince each other and still not do it. But that's okay. That's part of the fun. So let me hear your thoughts and theories, of course, down in the comments. You know I love it and you know I'll join you there. But it, yeah, the ambulance pulled up to the tree. You know, when they left, it was daytime. And after the tree, they just drove. It must have been late evening, I guess, because it pretty much turned dark on them. And... As far as I could tell, it wasn't snowing in the town where Henry was in Camden. It wasn't snowing on the road, but it was winter in that town. So that's one thing you would think maybe the ambulance drivers would go, you know, not only are we driving around in circles and there's nobody picking up on the radio and, you know, this is just crazy, crazy. All of a sudden we're in winter. I mean, I guess it was cold in Camden, but... I didn't see snow, so it was just a little bit crazy, just the whole thing, and I, I can imagine what they were going through as far as, you know, just like everybody else that pulls up to the tree and ends up in the town. Crazy. So Ethan was looking at some drawings, and, uh, you know, they could be have been there before, or in one of the scenes when Victor ran out, he grabbed his stuff, and some of the drawings flew out on the floor, and he didn't go pick them up. He just left. But either way, Ethan's trying to check out the story. Remember the Cromenockle and all that stuff? I'll try to do a video to refresh everybody's memory on the Cromenockle story and, you know, some of the stuff we've seen in the earlier seasons and try to put it all together, you know, of what we know now. But Ethan gets a phone call from Thomas telling him about his mom in the ambulance. Okay, we already know the ambulance is on its way. We already know they saw the tree uh, and the crows. So, you know, how did the voice know that she was coming is the voice on the phone the boy in white or the bad guy side if there is such a thing I, you know my, one of my theories is there's two factions in this alien world or dimension or subconsciousness or whatever it is that may be fighting each other or one side's trapped trying to get out and i could be totally wrong on all of that but ethan gets the phone call he gets told about it i wonder if the crows maybe the crows are some type of you know, hey, there's an ambulance here and it's got Tabitha in it. But, you know, for the boy in white to be in Tabitha's visions and Miranda's out in the real world and then come in the ambulance knowing that they're going to come to a tree. I mean, for people in the real world to stumble into Fromville, Fromville seemingly causes it to happen. I just don't think it's a random, random thing, especially now that Tabitha has been directed back and the tree was across the road and everything. You know, I... I think Fromville or the entity, whatever it is, the other dimension can actually open and close maybe a gateway to the real world at will. You know, it, it knows who it wants. It chose Victor's mom, right? From the dimension, contacted somehow, subconsciously, somehow through the real, real world. And, you know, there's some theories out there that talks about this being a purgatory, talks about it being a... Um, subconsciousness or an experiment of some kind but i think when we were told that victor's mom had visions before she even got to fromville that to me anyway just says this is bigger than that you know they're not uh, it's not a subconscious or purgatory or something it's something kind of like what henry said to tabitha in the basement it, it's a place that is here all around us it's it's like another dimension that lays on top of ours and for some reason that other dimension can interact with ours, but we don't know about it until we stumble into it, and then we don't know how to get out. 
So Tilly is told, hey, you know, don't you think it's pretty crazy to be using tarot cards in this place? And we have Fatima being checked on. But, you know, um, and she's like, yeah, I found something to eat I can hold down. But she's drinking some water. And I want to point to something. And I'll show another scene later in this very episode, in this video, where it happens. And maybe it's just a production thing. Like, okay, we have these two characters talking and they need to be doing something else. Like their hands need to be moving. So we'll have them have a drink of water or, you know, they'll be holding water or getting water out of the sink uh, in a glass to drink. That's something simple. Everybody does. They don't have any other stuff to drink there probably. So it would be common for them to be doing that all the time. But they are doing that all the time. You know, you may have to rewatch the seasons to really get it. But many, 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 many scenes, the characters are drinking water or they have water or something about water. So I don't think really that has anything to do with the overall theory. It may just be a production thing, but just something to note. So we got this scene in a sneak peek. So we'd saw a little of it before Victor talking to Sarah about the fort and being in the house and playing as a kid and stuff and said, you know, my mom and sister died, but I didn't murder them like you did your brother. So yeah, that's pretty cruel. That's pretty cold, but that's just Victor. So definitely Victor. I like the way they wrote his character and they're writing how he is because he just wasn't around anybody or society or school or, you know, stuff. Um, so yeah, I think he's a cool character. One thing I want to point out is something he said about once the massacre happened, everyone died except him. He met the boy in white and it was just him and the boy in white for several years alone. So some theories out there say that the town needs people that when some were killed off, like when some were killed off, they were replaced like with the people on the bus. But there was a time Victor says that there were years. It was just him. So how does that fit into those theories? And does it matter that there was at least years, a few years, Victor said, that there wasn't other people in the town, but eventually someone showed up and someone else and someone else and the town filled with people again. So we got Boyd going on to the bus with Randall. Randall not going to the sheriff's station. He's like, I'm staying here with you. And they start talking too a little bit. Randall starts telling some stuff. You know, they should tell each other stuff. Even though Boyd doesn't like Randall, thinks he's not a team player and all that kind of stuff, everybody's got to get on the same side. There's only two sides here, the people and the monsters. The people don't need to be divided. The people need to come together more. Hey, it's just a mirror of the real world, I guess. Even though there's so many monsters out there in the real world, even, we as humans, most of the time, can't get our crap together and work together and, and see eye to eye on pretty much anything. But Randall tells him some pretty cool details as far as the monsters have a pattern you know they the one goes over there and swings the other one goes over there you know but they're not doing that tonight why because the ambulance is about to show up he also mentions about stuff he saw places he's been you know the, the things with the cicadas and the things with you know him it happened to julie it happened to christy's girlfriend you know those three share this special you know trauma i guess you call it and so we may address that later in the episodes the ambulance does arrive in town, Tabitha saying, you know, don't stop out here in the middle of the woods, just wait till you get to town. And they were, weren't going to stop in town either, but the monsters made sure they did. So, of course, people start noticing Ethan, who was told his mom was in the ambulance and she needs help. You need to help her. He runs out of the house. Boyd grabs him, gives him the gym. They get them back in the house and safe and go out and try to deal with this situation. And is it a situation? The monsters, they're not just rinky dink anymore as far as they're thinking like they're just stupid monsters that try to talk you into coming out of the house or try to find you if you're hiding or rip your guts out if they catch you they're tactical they're becoming almost intelligent it seems like maybe they always were but they're playing games like totally with the barn thing with the girl laying in the road it was a good slower moment when we did see christy and kenny and jade but they're talking again or at least Jade spills, you know, the beans on some stuff. And so that's good, right? At least Kenny and Christy are a little more open. And, you know, the trailer actually for the next episode shows them in the diner again. I'm hoping this whole show is getting to the point where people are going to start talking to each other and realize that's the best way is to share knowledge. So then we got Victor and Sarah in their blanket fort and Victor's going to tell a story. He has a suitcase full of people's stuff. As he explains it, he's like... There were just too many dead bodies. I couldn't bury them all. The boy in white said, we'll just take an item from each of them and put them in a suitcase and bury it. 
and it seemed like a good idea. Victor was able to retrieve the suitcase, and now he's going to use those items to try to remember something that he's forgotten or left out of his memory. And of course, we find out that's part of Christopher's story, which is Jasper. And I want to say Jasper is in the caves. So back to the ambulance. Yeah, they just pull up. Uh, the guys get out, check the lady on the ground. Of course, they died. Tabitha's trying to warn them. The cop is freaking out all which away and handcuffs Tabitha inside the ambulance and goes out and starts shooting at them. The monsters, the one turns into a monster and just freaking out just like I would be. And she takes off running. Jim is now, oh my God, Tabitha's there. Boyd sees Tabitha and is like, what the hell? You know, and Jim sees that she's handcuffed. He's trying to figure all that out. They're going to get some tools from the bus. Randall is, and man, we're pretty much full throttle in the episode at this point. And we got the guy at Colony House saying there's a runner on the hill. Somebody is running away from the monsters, and it's Acosta, the cop. She's still shooting. And, you know, when those monsters scream, does that not just... It is a little scary. I mean, that's just freaky deaky, man. Crazy daisy. And they're all coming around the cop. She's just shooting frantically, which I would be. And she does shoot one of the colony house residents, which I probably would have too. I'd have just been, you know, doing screaming like a girl probably at the same time. But she makes it into the house. They let her in. You know, everything's just crazy. She's freaking out. Donna's trying to talk to her. We have a gunshot victim on the couch. Back outside, we've got... Boyd trying to find the keys, Jim trying to get Tabitha unhooked from the handcuffs from the ambulance, and we got Randall trying to help as well. He gets Boyd some tools, but he gets surrounded. He has a talisman, and he holds it up to him, and they're like, oh, honey, it doesn't work like that. So that's interesting. And when he tries to get away, the cicadas stop him. Randall, he's in a bad spot. Boyd, of course, can't find the keys, but it's because the monsters have them and they're dangling them in front of him saying, you can't save them all. You know, we're going to keep Randall. Here you go. Here's the keys. He takes them. He's cussing them and he drives the ambulance away. He does make it to Colony House. Henry gets out. Taffa gets out. Jim gets out. Boyd's there. Everyone's freaking out about the cop, about the resident getting shot, about the monsters being out there. And probably most of all, everyone is shocked that Tabitha showed back up on the ambulance. The ambulance came from the real world. Tabitha disappeared out in the woods. They thought she was dead. She went looking for the kids in the tower. Oh my God, what's going on? I think everyone, Donna, Boyd, you know, I think everyone realizes Tabitha's back and is being freaked out by that almost more than anything else and i think if i was in that town i'm kind of used to the monsters i'm kind of used to people getting shot or blood everywhere you know that kind of thing i'm kind of used to all that even some new people showing up in town but not someone that's already been here and left and went back to the real world and then came back again and here's another scene where people are drinking water again we got tilly probably drinking water we don't see her get it but we see elgin get the water sit down and drink it and this is when he sees the woman that he's been having visions of again, and he follows her. He's getting a little more brave, so maybe he'll actually ask her, what do I need to do? You, you're asking for my help. What do you want me to do? How can I help you? He wasn't asleep this time. I mean, could he have been asleep? And we just didn't see him. Usually it cuts to him asleep waking up or something like that, but this time it didn't. So it seems like he's awake. So that changes. But who is that? Who is it? Is it a good person? Is it a bad person? Does she want to hurt Elgin or help him? I think she wants to help him because I'm going to have to rewatch where she first maybe first appeared and she pushed him down in the water. He was maybe taking a bath or something and she pushed him down under the water. That had something to do with the music box. Like once she pushed him under the water, he couldn't hear the music, so he wasn't affected or something like that. So I'm going to have to rewatch that and rearrange my head and rearrange my theories, I guess. This show is very complicated. It's got a lot of levels to it. Every character kind of sort of means something and has a lot of stuff to do with everything. So, yeah, it's a pretty deep show. I did think this scene right here between Julie and Ethan was pretty cool. Ethan saying, hey, big sister, I see something's bothering you. Something's wrong. Please talk to me. And the fact that he's old enough or mature enough to say, look, you know, it is very possible in this crazy place that our parents may die and it'll be just us, you know. So we need to talk to each other. We need to help out each other. And that was very cool. That was a very cool scene and even with julie confessing to her little brother she was trying to stay strong she's the big sister but she's like 
I'm scared. So I like that. I really like that scene. It may actually play into the bigger picture later on. So we cut back to Jade and them talking and Jade telling them the stuff. You know, like I say, they actually talked. People were actually talking to each other. But they also talked about Kenny's mom. And I thought that aspect was pretty cool, as well as writing the letter that Kenny was doing and the stuff Jade said and all that kind of stuff. Jim and Tabitha went to a room away from everybody else and Tabitha was talking and I do think she has a point as far as I think the boy in white wanted me to return to the real world, wanted me to find the paintings and Victor's dad and try to figure this out to get everybody home or to save the children or whatever. But she said she didn't. She doesn't think that, um, you know, she figured it out. But is bringing Victor's dad part of it like maybe that was the only thing like yeah while you're there you're going to see that victor's mom saw visions of this place before she even came here and this and this and this but the main thing i need you to do is to get victor's dad and bring him here maybe that's it i don't know but she says something like she might have messed up the only way to get them home and i just don't think that's it um exactly yet but there's still so much we don't know so the resident that the cop shoots dies and Boyd goes off on Acosta, someone he hasn't really been introduced to yet and really is unlike his character. When I first watched it in the first just moments of feeling the scene, I'm like, dude, that's a little out of character. It's taking me a little out of the zone a little bit. But when you really realize the whirlwind that just happened and everything with her shooting randomly, he would have done the possibly the same thing in that situation. Um, anybody could have, I mean, there were monsters coming. I mean, holy crap. Like I say, I would probably be screaming like a girl or crapping my pants. I mean, come on. A lot of us think we may be brave, but something like that happening, you know, two dudes getting slashed up and then the girl turning into a monster and screaming like this weird, crazy creature. And you shot it a few times and it ain't dying. I'd be freaking out. And Boyd is freaking out because of the situation when it comes to the whole dangling the keys in front of him, making him watch Kenny's mom die and them saying to him, oh, you don't think we're going to break you? Just wait. We're about to do a bunch of stuff, not just the barn stuff. We're going to do the Hamlet's thing and we're going to do a few more things to try to break Boyd. In that one moment, you know, he lost it. And that's why Donna grabbed him and pulled him upstairs. He's like, look, dude, I'm losing it too. I'm about to lose it right in front of you. So as far as the entire place taking a toll on Donna, yeah. And on Boyd, yeah. The two leaders of the town, whatever little bit of hope and perseverance that they have or had is so very thin right now. In this moment, they are very near being broken. Back in the basement, Sarah and Victor continue talking Victor finally gets to Christopher thinking there's nothing in here of Christopher. And then he's like, oh, I remember Jasper. And as far as the flashback scenes that it shows, you know, he said Christopher was funny and made him laugh, but then he didn't anymore. But then the doll seems to have started being possessed and talking on its own, talking to Christopher. So that mirrors to me a little bit. The voices inside Sarah's head is the vo same voices inside the doll. Um, is Jasper a good guy, bad guy? Jasper may have been telling Christopher what to do as far as you know one theory out there why the massacre happened how it happened even though people were hiding Christopher told the monsters where everybody was where everybody was hiding and that's how they all got killed he just didn't know where Victor was hiding maybe the doll told Christopher show where everybody's hiding and you'll get to go home like they did Sarah kill the boy but also one thing, another theory, another level of all of this, go back to when it was written in her arm, kill the boy, you know, the voices talking to Sarah and written on her arm, you know, scratched into it, kill the boy or something. I, I didn't watch it back. But what if that meant Victor, not Ethan? So then there's the Fatima thing with the dead body and the blood and I'm not going to show any more frames and I'm not even going to talk about it too much. It reminds me of this 1980s. I think it's 1980s expression. Gag me with a spoon. It's like, really? No, don't, don't reach in there. Don't stick your fingers. No, don't lick your fingers. That was just so gross to me and freaky. And, you know, it still is there as far as eating the rotten food. I think we still have the same theory or two theories. One theory is she's carrying a demon baby. One theory is she's not really pregnant and she herself is turning into a monster. 
whatever the case, something's happening for sure. And what is it? I don't know, but she's freaking me out. Because the way she like, okay, Ellis, get on out of here. I'm going to shut the door now and be private. Now I'm going to go over here and eat some blood, lick some blood off my fingers. It's almost like she knew that's what she wanted from the get go. She wasn't just going to sit a spell. She wasn't just going to mourn the loss of someone that she was rude to, a, you know, a day or two before. No, she knew she smelled the blood, wanted the blood, something from the get go. And that adds to the freakiness. But then we got Boyd and Donna taking a drink, trying to relax, trying to just, okay, take a breath. And then they see the lights of the ambulance and Randall spread out across the windshield in the hood. But of course, he's still alive. We do see him in description. So I don't know if it's a spoiler, maybe a little spoiler, but we do see him. You know, we've seen him in a promo photo, I think. And we've, uh, if you read the descriptions of the episodes, his name is in a later episode. So yeah, it could be a flashback. It could be him dead somehow. But I do think he does live. So yeah, what a freaky episode. What a crazy whirlwind of an episode. We got a lot revealed, I think. And Tabitha returning to town, that's such a huge thing for everything, for everyone, for everybody there. And I think they know it. The next episode, it'll be like the next day and they can kind of, you know, just breathe a little bit, maybe. But we'll see, you know, next episode could be a whirlwind as well, this crazy show. But that's totally enough of me rambling. This video is longer than I even wanted it to be. You guys let me know your theories, of course, down in the comments below. And you know I'll join you there. This is James in Nashville. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more dead stuff.